Hi everyone. Um, my name is Calvin King. Um, so what? Um, what was actually in this talk? I, I, I was really excited to come here. So this was a project I worked. I started working on way back when I was in my um, when I was doing my PhD. And it's something that um, and, and, and it actually is something that we always um, encounter in our in our everyday life, right? So um, let me give you a typical example, right? You're browsing the, the computer, you're on the computer, and then you get to see this, like this quadrant, it, it's got a lot of boxes. And then you can identify, you know, the bicycle, any of us, right? Can you pinpoint the bicycle? How many, how many people have, have seen something like that, right? And then once you're doing that, you, you, you realize that, I want to of the one of the quadrants has something like one eighth of a bicycle. It's not really a bicycle, but it's got one of the tires, so the wheel is right? And then you're not sure if it's a bicycle or not. And then in another picture, you actually see a little bit, which is probably a bicycle or the hybrid between a bicycle and the motorcycle, right? And you're not sure. But you answer it, right? You answer it, and your brain really tells you, oh, you got it wrong. But then the thing tells you, hey, you got it. Right? We get that. So, what I'm going to talk about today is box or entity, or the limited entity, right? Not just the And basically, I'm going to start by talking about what box are, what the information is, interaction between box and this information, and our solution or the project I, I did back in my PhD and currently working on. And then I'll fill questions, right? So, a lot of times we see something like this, right? When we're on the internet. But then we can talk about those times. But when you, when you try to create an account, they don't tell me what that is looking for. What you think it's trying to find? Pattern is the cursor when it comes up to take it. Okay. Very good. So generally, your page is trying to figure out if you're a bot. So your page is trying to find out if you're a human. In other words, if you're inefficient, right? You think about it. It's looking for, what it's looking for is our characteristics, not a bot, but the fact that you might be human and you're not efficient, right? So you're going to look at your cursor, how your cursor moves, right? And if there are variations in the way you move, then it's going to be like, oh yeah, you're human, right? But in Boston, it's typically going to be straight, right? My vision is going to see the checkbox, right? So the checkbox. Now, if it's not too sure, what are you going to do? If you don't know how to teach you, right? Because if you try to look at um, things like, what do you browse? You know? Um, and you want to be browsing on something and it's brand new, so we have, of course. So it's going to see your browsing history and you're looking at a phone that walks on one leg, right? It works in top of two legs. Really weird questions. The more weird they are, the more inefficient they are, the more I agree with you, right? Now, I do admit that there's some artificial intelligence that can really write and do such. Right? So you can send it to do something, it doesn't know what it's supposed to do, so you go online, get to another website, and try to find answers, right? But at the end of the day, some of the characteristics that distinguish between men, us, and bots are that we are not perfect, right? So now, let's ask ourselves, what are bots, actually, right? So there may be some new applications that can do a lot of repetitive tasks, right? Automated tasks. So, let's say you are um, trying to find something. Data science. This is data science today. You're trying to find something on, on the internet. So, you, you know, I'm going on a social media platform like Twitter and you search data science. It's going to give you about, maybe, let's say it gives you about 2,000 hits. Now, any of you are creative, so you want to probably interact with all these 2,000 hits, all these 2,000 profiles. It's going to be really important to you. So, in this case, what you do, you can put down the box, and it's going to go through all those and new likes to each and every one of them, right? 
So it's a software application that basically runs on real time. It is a web thing here, right? It also makes humans, right? The way we behave. It communicates with other bots. I know that's scary, right? Can't you be chatting with another bot? I don't know what they're going to be talking about, but they do, right? And then also chat with human beings, they communicate with humans as well, right? And then you can operate continuously with very little human intervention or interaction. Now, it's also very difficult to identify because some of these algorithms become more sophisticated. I'll give you an example. Back in the day, one of the, one of the signatures of a bot is that it worked all, all around us. About the clock, right? 24 hours is beyond, right? But right now, we have brought to a point where we can mimic human wake sleep cycle. So this way to say, it's just a clock. I'm going to bed. I'm not going to report to any other thing until it's 9 o'clock in the morning, right? Because one of the ways that you could actually capture that, that was one of the ways that you could capture to do something with the clock. It's human being. Get to rest, right? But do not get to rest. But now you can do human behavior and you can go. Now, 47.5, it could be higher, of all internet traffic, a bot, a automated in. The largest ones are probably going to be the callers, right? Now, for example, I know if it's only there, it's good bot. There are no good or bad bots, right? A bot is simply a tool. But I'm referring to the intent, right? So now let's talk about good bots. So let's talk about chat bots. So you know, so you can do that or you're on a, a new or deep comments platform and you have a question, you can get get chatbot, right? The web call that can index sites and information, right? These are the most common of them, right? And we have scrapers that just spray. But there are a lot of information from websites, right? Then we have shopping bots, right? And these help um, with shopping. Transaction bots help with transactions as well, right? Monitor bots. Now, these are some members of bots, right? I think it's a good example of a monitor bot. Back in 2018, I developed um, something called an e-commerce app. And because I'm a student, and I needed money at the time, I needed people to link my app to a lot of other e-commerce websites, right? I wanted to buy and sell things, you know, by taking other people's stuff and selling them cheaper than you can them with, you know, a little bit of profit or all, right? So I then developed certain types of but one bot in particular was very good, was a very good bot that I created. And what happened was once you get on the website, now it acts like a female there in a way, right? Because once you get on my website, you've already agreed to the term, I can monitor you. Think about it. We can monitor your every cursor move once you go in. We can an analytics, right? So this bot will just monitor everything you do. So let's say you buy an item and then so once you type anything onto the the, the system, it will record it even when you don't click a send, right? So at the end of the day, if you do click, thank you for the product. I really like the product. It's going to tell me, initially, you clicked, you typed in, it's going to say, it's going to say, it's going to say, you can get one more. You know, but where do you can take our mind? You don't want to go desperate. So he'll give you and just say thank you, right? So then I would get that information and then maybe if I give him a good sound, he'll come back. He'll be much more appreciated, right? So the monitor box, I could have done that. They give him a lot of information and they don't, and they're quite silent. Sometimes they are paired with other types of box, like the transaction box, but they're mostly they are used to monitor a lot of activities, including flagging other activities. This is what we 
Michael Bosch, we actually created to help us with misinformation. So the main focus of this presentation is going to be on the monitoring bot here. Now let's talk about the other side of the bot, the bad one, in quotes. We have download bots, which means you download a large file. Um, spam bots, we all have a familiar spam bot. We have editing bots, um, which means these bots typically give you an unfair advantage over others, right? Um, we have the fraud bots, and then we have the botnets. The botnets, we are familiar with them. They're kind of like um, um, the sort of, um, they're bumping on, right? Who's going to that? And that's because of the way they are, right? They're interconnected, and then they swarm the system so in such a way that the third leg goes down, right? And then we have social media bots. And these bots are the bots that we'll be focusing on today. Now, what are the interactions between the bots and the information, right? So basically, some of the things that they do is they manipulate public opinions. They manipulate public opinions on social media. Another thing is they are able to boost the popularity of certain candidates or certain actors or things, right? And then they spread legal information. And I will explain what misinformation is in a minute. Another thing they do is they increase polarization. We are already in a very polarized society. So they increase um, the polarization, the divide between people and people ideology. Another thing is they so distrust in communities and institutions. And then they spread government propaganda, right? There are a lot of government agencies all over the world that actually help, but they actually use bots in spreading their propaganda and conspiracy theories. How do they do this? They do this simply by, you know, boosting certain hashtag keywords, uh, things like that, right? And they secure targeted um, harassment campaigns on certain people, you know, also party. Um, or celebrities, right? Um, what else they do? They also share certain links and articles um, on their, their pages. And then they just generally spin their account. Yes, they, they are able to create their own account and um, content as well. Mm -hmm. And they generate all the followers, likes, things like that. These metrics um, that basically people are popular. So a lot of people. You see people with 10,000 followers, they can buy those likes, they can buy those followers, and half of them are 75. Now, we can categorize malicious bots into three main bots, right? But there are standard bots. And these guys, these type of bots are the middle end to be amplify content. That's all they do. They need to, they need to buy, they need certain content. Then we have another section called the monitoring bot. These guys typically just share um, malware, right, using fake links. So they, 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 they send you fake links that you take and they redirect you onto other sites or other platforms. And the goal is typically to infiltrate your network or a platform and um, get information or steal information, including identity. And then we have what the what is this thing called the cyborg? These bots are a combination of both human and bot activity. But the automated section is always if the automated part of that bot is larger, it's more it's larger than the human intervention part, right? So it's more automated, but it is managed by humans, right? And, and so you find some human element in that. This is much more difficult to detect because of that. Right? Now, the distribution of bots versus human versus all the other entities from 2016 to 2017. Now, think about it from 2014, good bots were higher, had a larger number than bad bots. But come 2016, 
after the break week elections and uh, um, and, and the political election, break week campaigns and election, it's changed, right? You can see the white bots in gray are slightly outpacing the blue bots, right? And then by 2022, you can see the difference, right? And why is that so? It's profitable. It's working, right? That's the only, that's the only logical reason, right? If it wasn't profitable, it would be the only efficient problem. And think about it. Maybe the bots, bots, the good bot is so easy. You go to the program right now. You can go to GitHub and buy, buy some of them. I have a code, the source code. You go to the bot. For Twitter, for Instagram, for WhatsApp, right? Um, and so, another thing, so who is this being bought? Why are they so, you know, so, what do you look at this? Of course, we have scammers, we have fraudsters, we have um, hackers. That's one thing that you can spot. We all know these guys in different people, right? Now, what are the use when you use? Malicious bots. We have small range groups, right? Which can be really small, can change, can really, you know, yeah, really. But they could also be right? They can be bots. They have large political campaigns. All the bots, no one is exempt. All these bots. And then finally, we have yes, government agencies, right? Union bonds, membership bonds. Now, here's a topic that we're talking about. Another thing we talk about is misinformation. We talk about how bonds are responsible and bonds help with propaganda campaigns and conspiracy theories. So, what is misinformation? It's any information. That is inaccurate, irrespective of its text. So, as long as it's inaccurate and it's not correct, irrespective of your intent or the intent when you create a new information, right? So, you don't have this information which is based on intent. So, I intend to do it, I intend to create it. Then that's the information. And then we have more information that has to do with more words, the sharing of more words. But we're focusing on this information because it's a larger picture, right? It sort of encompasses this information and also more information. Now, this information, this spread of this information has been, has been adapted by, um, you know, lack of editorial guardrails, right? So right now, in technology advancement, because that means anybody can share information. Anybody can create information. Back in the days, in the days of the, um, the regular media, where you would have to go through a channel, there were gatekeepers, right? They would ensure the integrity or the veracity or whatever information you're putting out there. You no longer have those guardrails, right? Anybody can create information. Think about it. Back in 2014, 15% about 15 percent of all edits on the Wikipedia page was by a bot. So you are continuing things that a bot set up on the and said, oh yeah, let me just go make this change on Wikipedia. And it became the change, right? And mind you, fed our large language model on Wikipedia, right? So we are creating content and we are continuing this content and using this content to make decisions. No longer we ask chat GPT. Hey, give this question. They give the, the, the answer, but then the citations they use are non-existent, right? And so now it's also being being exacerbated by the quality of the data. You have the volume of the data, you have the variety of the data, you have the velocity of the data, and you have the velocity of the data. It's big. Too much information, too much data. It's so difficult for us to figure out or to produce or to check each message or each tweet or each post on social media. And that is now because we have
on focused life and other shared metrics makes it even more difficult, right? Um, for information or for us to verify information. So what does it call? What does it mean information to us, right? It means a lot of new stuff. So right now, you see a picture on, on social media, or you see a picture on the internet. What do you think? What do you think on the internet? You ask me yourself, is this true? You might see my picture, right? But you'd be like, is this really him? You see Obama. You'd be like, or you see Trump. Is it really Trump? It's really him because of big things. We no longer trust each other. We no longer trust whatever we see. We second guess them, right? So we read this book. And it's financial and economic crisis as well. Privacy and security implications. Public health issues, right? I remember during a hurricane, a hurricane Harvey, um, people were told to evacuate, right? And it was flooded all over. And the community information that came up. And he said, if you were to go into the water whilst there was flood waters, you were more likely to get tetanus. So people stayed in their homes and they were being, you know, stuck, right? So this information has public health implications. Think about it. During COVID, vaccine hesitancy is having serious health implications. It also undermines public life across the world. Now, the question that I ask is this. Who spreads misinformation? Who is responsible for misinformation? Who is going to get a shot? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. a certain group was, they just put it and they just spread it out without getting the proof of it. That's very good. Because it's really huge, right? In 2018, we're facing and it's crew that has um, data research. And they found out that when the controls were bought, humans were responsible for sharing the bulk of the information of people, right? So think about it. And I took a case study, so I did a research that was published in 2017. And I tried to find the effect of correction, fact checking, on fake news, spreading of fake news. And we found out that fake news is actually, when you try to correct fake news, it amplifies, it gets amplified. Like, it makes fake news worse. The amplification of the propagation of fake news becomes worse. So, sometimes it's very difficult to let it be. But then you want to control for two things the network account. For example, people with larger followers may be responsible for sharing fake news, right? Because you have more followers. And by this way, them having a lot more bots in them would also be higher, right? So we control for bots and networks, right? So what we found was really interesting. And what we found was, if we went from putting the network, the bots, and you and I that share this information, that are responsible, not just for putting them, in, but even the bots also share this information, was not statistically significant, right? It, it, it was just fine, right? So the result still held, right? So at the end of the day, bots were not, they were drivers of the information, they were taking the information and go back to them. Yes. Um, there's a graph that shows the time takes, it's an important fun function, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like a test. Um, on what happens when something happens in from signal uh, mechanics. So it's just telling you that um, he called it to be amplified, right? And, and this is also, this is for the network effect. So the network, the number of people have the same effect and bots have the same effect. How that answer? Right. And so what is our solution? Solution is this. Bots are drivers. So we create them and we try to consume them. It's very difficult for us to actually target misinformation because think about it. It's easy to see fake news and real news, right? But the truth about it is misinformation is a mixture, usually a mixture of both truth and fact, uh, false and fact. So it's very difficult for you to actually detect misinformation. But you can target the middleman, right? If you look at the middleman, which are the facts, then the problem 
probability of people getting information would be um, even higher. For example, Alfred and Postman in 1914 figured that misinformation or rumors are spread or propagate the most when information that is important in the lives of people, you and I, are lacking or subjectively ambiguous, right? So, that means general hurricane or crisis event, as long as the right people get information, because you're going to get people who are being sent, from this is the bias is going to prevent them from even believing in what you say. They, they're not going to listen. So, we want to target people who need the information, but who do not have the information at that time. And so, it means you have to beat the bar. Together. Now, the problem is with the bots, the people who do is that the bots are evolving. If you want to say, well, I'll go to them, it's going to work today and tomorrow it's not going to work. So, the best thing you do is put a bot with whatever situation you have today and ensure that what? It sells learning. It gets updated with humans and updates as it keeps going, right? So, it flags the problem is that someone is a bot. A malicious bot, right? So it's self something It takes a differentiation between humans and non human entities. Differentiation between malicious and non malicious entities. That is, bots that share whose main goal or intent is to share this information and those who are just sending you information, like breaking news, right? So we have regular bots that are in intent for good and we have malicious bots. And so, and then create an index for researchers. An index is something that will give you a probability of the number of bots malicious per the day, per day, right? That you can use in your analysis, right? So basically, you create an index for you. So basically, what we found out was there were some signatures of those bots. And one more thing on the activity. The other thing is amplification. How we are able to amplify some of the messaging we found so or some of the information we want people to get. And finally, how do we able to max their behavior, right? Because if they now progress, if they now are able to have this evolving behavior where they are able to go like, um, okay, we're going to have a human heat wave cycle. Um, we're going to behave like human beings, we're going to make typographical errors like human beings. Um, because bots don't typically do that, right? Bots are learning to answer the capture. That's why there's a, there's a wind. There's a, it's kind of like a wind, a technical wind. They just build a new capture, a recapture, a new capture, just to prevent bots from getting into other websites or a uh, site. And they, they, they find out other signatures as well. On the account page, catch them wrong. Once you build a bot, you scrutinize the box, if there will be a higher chance of getting a figure out if there is a bot account or not. Right? Combine um, with shares and application. When two bots are more likely to, and when they're communicating, it's more likely that they are bots, right? And they are the signature. So it's a combination of several of these signatures that we use when we observe, right? And then um, on this day, um, response time. Now we can think of the lag time when we are responding to queries and prompts, right? Um, also, sometimes when we set the term online, um, measures low quality comments, like the electrical density, you can actually measure electrical density based on um, you know, um, on, 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 on the grammatical or the way the frame um, sentences. You can also use the um, theory of mind to um, to guide um, some of your research or some of the project or some of the signature. If you use research um, theory like um, theory of mind, you might be able to figure out if it's a bot or not. On visual instruments, they are not very good, just like me. We get it very easily. And so we want to put in their create their own accounts. Their item will be repeated usually or will be created really unrealistic usually, right? Also, story profile images. Or right now, we become really 
here at creating their own images. They are able to create images of people that do not exist, have never existed. That and it works. So they have evolved from this right now. And then we have high volume of rich media and rich content. Back in the day, on Twitter, for example, we use a combination of the list of count, the status count, uh, the follower and friends count. You find that the data is skewed for one particular area. That was one telltale sign over the bottom. So right now, it becomes so good that it becomes really difficult to actually um, determine if something is bought just because of their status, they said follower or friend count. And then um, they have a little less focus on um, three lines that attach that and, um, and topics, right? So the question that I'll pose before I end this is, whenever you go on the internet, you go on the internet, you ask yourself, and you're chatting with everybody, doesn't matter who it is, are you human or not, right? Because you could be talking to a bot. There's a high, so math, 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 there's a higher chance whether you're talking to right now or on computer is actually non human. Right? So ask yourself that question when you go online. Um, thank you. Any questions? Yes? Thank you so much. So I have a question. Um, I work with the project in and so what are some signatures or identifiers you can look for to separate a bot from an like, actual bot? Uh, um, right. Uh, so, so, for example, I'll say, look at photos of certain keywords, right? And um, some of the responses might be a bit, um, like a telltale. So the telltale sign when someone is about it, especially when you're talking or you're having a chat with the person. When it comes on mechanical search, I believe that should be on Amazon, right? To Police this is to ensure that um, everyone is given a first shot and if you don't want a bot, you shouldn't get a bot to be responding to your survey, right? And so I would say, in my opinion, um, the thing is on the organization, right? Amazon. You probably wouldn't have so much um, news, right? Um, does that answer a little bit? Yeah. You, yeah. So you, you, um, I would say one thing, right? The first problem is following you don't want to you don't really want to make someone who's human at a lot. <laughs> because you can. But um yeah, so that's the thing. There, there are a lot of um, when you when you do research or you um you have a survey, there are a lot of checks, checkpoints. It's the person that pay attention to the or the person is really not human. So you can always implement some of those checkpoints. Um, but then you then get rid of those surveys and probably make a bot that's not human. Yes. Um, so the question is, what is the most common mistake that you see people make when they search for the bot? Um, so yeah, they're, they're able to create um, images that do not um, exist, um, just like they're able to create fake and um, fake. So I think last, well, maybe last, last year, last few years, I started creating images of people, just people who work. People not human, so it's just going to try and create any image of anybody, um, and then, you know, just starting from nothing, right? And so it's able to create people and and that person might be able to that person that never exist and never existed, right? Out of the body. Yeah, so it, it, it's done. People do create and are able to um, so AI that is able to create um, people that never existed, even the people that never exist. I guess big banking was what she's talking about. Is there a signature for big banks? Oh like, so. uh, yeah, but they get it right? Back in the day when you the background, you could actually see the different in the background um, so you can in the face, right? But right now they're really getting better. They're trying to catch up. Um, they're trying to catch up, actually. Um, and so they get the signatures, 
fine for a similar success. They are really very, very difficult. And they are fast in all of it. Um, you know, um, that, that's all I can say about that for now. But back in the day, you know, you can see the background, you can see the shadow, you can see, you can see a super important something. Um, that we can catch that in the deep learning model. But think about it, in the same architecture, you need to build this AI, so you can really catch the AI. So, um, so it's almost like, you go box, catch a box. Um, that's the cool thing we can do. But here's the way you call it. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that, that's a really powerful, right? I, I don't believe anything I see on the country today. Okay. Even if I see my own picture, I ask myself, you know, it's a good story. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh -huh. Any last questions? Yep.